Greetings from Tokyo, I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are going to create custom paint racks. Thanks for joining me in the studio. The Tokyo Metro system is, well, there's no other way to put it, world class. Maybe the best in the world. Within the greater metropolitan area of Tokyo, there's basically nowhere that it doesn't go. Not only is it a really convenient and relatively inexpensive way to get around, it's clean, safe, and, well, as the world knows, always on time. But occasionally, if you pay close attention, you realize that there are flaws in the system. On occasion, when approaching certain stations, you'll hear an announcement which is basically the equivalent of, we may need to stop suddenly in order to avoid an accident. Now, that's not an exact translation, but the subtext is this. The station ahead has not yet installed the safety barriers on the platform to keep people from flinging themselves onto the track as the train approaches. We may need to slam on the brakes to keep from turning a despondent commuter into chunky salsa. Please enjoy your day. I have a confession to make. I've been in this hobby for over a decade, and my paints look like this. Yeah, I, listen, I'm, I'm not proud of that. As you can see, there's a mix of Games Workshop and Vallejo and Army Painter paints in there. Honestly, every time I buy new paint, I just throw it in the bin. And whenever I have to search for something where I'm preparing for a project, I need to get my paints out. Basically, I have to dump the whole thing out or spend several minutes sort of digging through it. And it's not great. And frankly, it's a bit of a crime that it's taken me this long to deal with it. So I went to the internet and began looking for paint racks. Now you can find these from many different vendors. Some are made of uh, MDF or plastic. Those are all great. But then it occurred to me, oh, I have a 3D printer. So I went to Colts and began looking for files there, only to realize that most of the files are created for FDM or filament printers that print plastic and not resin. Mostly because the print beds on those printers are considerably larger and can print something the size of a large paint rack. Whereas a resin printer is meant to print, well, miniatures and other small resin parts. Well, not having a FDM printer, I was sort of stuck. And had given up when it occurred to me, I'm an industrial designer. In fact, I have a very expensive degree that took me nearly 15 years to pay off, so let's do something about that. We're going to need some 3D software, and Windows 10 actually has a fairly decent free 3D application built in called 3D Builder, but honestly it doesn't have the tool set that we need here. So wanting to sit on my couch and build something there, I looked through the App Store and found Shaper 3D. Now, if you've ever done any sort of 3D modeling searches on YouTube or Google, you'll undoubtedly have seen the ads for this. It looks incredibly intuitive, almost too good to be true. Now, when I clicked on the app, there was no way to buy it. But instead, like most other applications, it's switched to a subscription model. And I was shocked to find out when I opened the app that it's $40 a month or, you know, $300 a year. That's kind of steep. Now, I get that it's professional grade. As it turns out, if you sign up for the $300 a year plan, you actually get a 14 day trial. And of course you can cancel before that 14 days is up. So you can get a feel for the software and not have to pay anything. And that's exactly what I did. And I can tell you the software is absolutely incredible. As an industrial design student many, many years ago, this is literally something that I dreamed of. Like, in our wildest fantasies, could we think of something so intuitive and so simple to use and so fast? And the fact that I was using it, holding it in my hands while sitting on the couch watching Netflix in the background, that, that's just another level of beyond fantasy. So I set about creating my designs. I began as I always do with a simple sketch. I knew that I needed a base and also an outer wall to contain the paint pot. And I wanted them to be interconnected. I knew that at the different heights, I wanted to save resin, so there would need to be a lot of negative space. Instead of a solid wall, there would be legs. And most importantly, 
I needed to make sure that the stadium stacked so that I could see the paints in the back just as easily as I could see the paints in the front. But I wasn't quite sure how to connect them. The initial concept that I came up with was to create a series of interlocking tabs along the base ring. So I entered Shaper 3D and began creating my rudimentary shapes. These became the building blocks for all the parts for all four tiers. Once I had my basic building blocks created, I knew that I could duplicate them, modify them, and create all four of the heights that I needed by simply extruding the existing pieces and then attaching them together. I was left with a set that looked like this. I brought them into the 3D slicing application and because this was just a prototype print, didn't support them, knowing that they would print straight up. And five hours later, I was left with this my initial prototype set. As you can see, each piece has interlocking tabs and slots. And they're meant to hold each other, but when you put more than one together, well, I realized that that wasn't going to do the trick and I needed to revamp the design for it to really work. And strangely enough, the next day, the idea came to me in the shower. I, as cliche as that sounds, it actually happened. So the minute I got out, I sat down at the computer and began designing this. It occurred to me that what was needed was much more contact area to make sure that the connections were much sturdier. So I modeled a rail along the back side of the shapes and then created a socket for that rail on the front facing of the shapes. It took some adjusting to make sure that the angles were correct because we want the tolerance here to be pretty tight. With a friction fit, we sort of want the pieces to snap together, but because these are made out of resin, if the fit is too tight, you're just gonna end up with broken parts. So, working my way through the design, reshaping the legs, and readjusting all of the heights to match, I was able to create a new interlocking system. I then sent it over to the 3D printer. Four hours later, I had my prototype parts in hand, and I was pleased to discover that as exactly as they were designed, they fit together with a satisfying snap. What's more is because they created an interlocking network, the more you connected, the sturdier it became. I tested the prototype with a few paint bottles, and realizing that it was a success, spent the next 70 hours printing duplicates. When I was done, what was a shameful mess became a collection worthy of a serious hobbyist. So there you have it, a custom designed, modular solution. Now, if you like these files, they're available on Colts 3D for a small fee, or if you sign up for my Patreon at any level, you'll get them for free. Well, I absolutely enjoyed the opportunity to sort of flex my industrial design muscles. It's been a while, I had to knock the rust off, so to speak. But things turned out, well, frankly, better than I expected. And I'm quite proud of the results. I hope they're useful to you as well. Thanks for supporting the channel. We've reached over 500 subscribers, which in the span of a month to me just blows my mind. It's absolutely incredible the support that you guys have shown to me and, and I can't thank you enough. If you'd like to, check out the Patreon linked in the description below. And you can always check out the t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com. And we'll see you on the next one.